Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and today I want to talk to you about coat type. So, you know, I've talked to you about coat type lots of times, but what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of define or talk about why we've categorized dogs into, for us, these six different segments. So, here we go. Um, we talk a lot about double coat type, right? So those double coated dogs, what are they? So typically they are your dogs that your Bernese Mountain Dogs, your Australian Shepherds, your Shetland Sheep Dogs. A lot, some of our sporting dogs can fit in there like our Golden Retrievers and our Duck Tollers have more or less a double coat. And what we mean by that is these are dogs that are usually doing jobs or working outside um, often it, with other types of animals, right? So herding them or hunting them and retrieving them. They're outside kind of in the elements. And why do they have a double coat? So they have this long, typically a little bit harsher outer coat. Well, and by long, I just mean longer than their undercoat. And this serves as their protection, right? Like this is their rain jacket, the thing that keeps the dogs weatherproof. So whether they're out herding dogs all day, whether they are going through the marsh and retrieving ducks, they need this, this outer coat, this rain coat to protect them. And then underneath that, they have a sweater. They have an undercoat. It's usually softer, fluffier, insulating, right? Like that's what the undercoat does. So that's their sweater under their coat. So that's why we call them double coats because they have these two different coats. Now, often these dogs are going to shed. Typically they shed twice a year. They shed out um, going from spring into summer. So often they have like a kind of a shorter undercoat at this point, like less dense undercoat. And then sometimes they'll shed out a little bit from summer in, or from fall into winter where they put on a thicker undercoat, right? Obviously to keep them warmer. Also, we'll often see our females shed, uh, have an additional shedding cycle when they come into heat. Um, and especially after a litter of puppies, they tend to drop all of their coats. So our double coated breeds are those ones that are typically working outside often with other animals and they need kind of two coats. They need a sweater and a jacket to keep them warm and to protect them from the elements. They shed a lot um, and you probably know one or love one near you. Um, another coat type we talk about is those drop coated dogs. So what do we mean by drop coat? Like that's kind of a weird term. So these are our floofy, flowy, Think of like that silk dress in the wind type coats. We're talking Maltese, Yorkies, Lhasa Opsos, Shih Tzus. You could even put Afghans into this category, right? So their coats are long and silky and they can get tangled quite easily, but well-kept drop coats look absolutely amazing, right? Sky Terriers would also be in here um, with this list. Now you might think, well, what about my Irish setter? We're gonna get to them a little bit later. You know, they do kind of have a drop coat type property to their coat, um, but we have a special category for them. So we'll get to that. So our drop coated dogs um, typically need a lot of brushing, right? To keep that long hair tangle free, you need brushing. Some people have like wrappers or banding that they do to protect the hair, keep it less tangled so the, the dogs can, you know, uh, exercise out, outside and like have um, less tangles and less debris kind of get stuck in that coat, but that's a whole other video to talk about that. But um, a lot of people will keep their drop coated breeds clippered quite short if you know, you're know you not showing them or competing with them in any way. And that does kind of change the quality of the coat. Um, but for most dogs, you know, our drop coats will have some kind of flowy, floofy, really beautiful coat. Those are drop coats. Okay. Uh, we're going to move into scissored coat type. So scissored coat type, this is dogs whose coats is continuously growing. They are not going to look like that breed unless you manually trim like a topiary tree that breed to look that shape. So think of poodles as probably the most common, Bedlington Terriers, Bichons, um, there's doodles that fit into this category. Um, but there's lots of Portuguese water dogs are going to fit into there. Some of our rustic coated breeds like Legato, Spanish water dogs, Irish water spaniels, you know, they are not going to look like that shape unless we manually go in there and trim them. You could really just let them grow and they would kind of eventually all look very similar if we didn't carve the desired shape, you know, the shape that we think that breed should look like into that coat. 
Now this coat, um, obviously they need regular trimming. Every six to eight weeks, really, they need some kind of regular trimming, especially around the sanitary area and the eyes. They need a lot of brushing. If you don't brush that continuously growing coat, it is going to mat and tangle. So I think that that's why traditionally these breeds have specialized trims so that there is less maintenance in the brushing, although there's still a lot of brushing with these breeds. And you know, these breeds are, are great. Most of these breeds are hypoallergenic, right? They're not shedding. Therefore, um, we, you know, a lot of people have less allergic reaction to these breeds, which kind of makes them great in that way. A lot of them tend to grow a lot of hair in their ears. So they need that ear maintenance as well. Just something to think about when you're thinking about like that scissored coat type, that coat type that continuously grows. Um, okay, I promised you we get into like setters and spaniels. So setters and spaniels, some people categorize this as jacketed. Some people say like, like they do kind of have two coat types. Why aren't they a double coat? We just think of double coat as like two coats in one. So setters and spaniels will often have that shorter body coat, and maybe you need to rake out some undercoat from those coat, and that longer, floofier, almost drop coat look to their furnishings, right? To their skirt, maybe their ears, their chest, their tail featherings, their pants. So, um, you know, we know our Irish setters can be all fiery and red and look beautiful with that kind of flowy coat, but they have that jacket and then they have that longer drop coat. Now, the longer, obviously, you keep those furnishings, the more brushing that you need to do. And again, some of those breeds lead more like raking and more maintenance on that jacket to keep it like nice and tight and close to the body, right? But this is a good example of a breed that you might need more grooming equipment than you might think to keep that breed maintained because really you're kind of keeping two types of coat um, in condition at the same time. So, um, you know, Irish setters, English setters, Cocker Spaniels, especially English Cocker Spaniels, we'd really like lump them into this category. Um, smooth coated dogs, I hope this is fairly um, straightforward, but you know, think of your Dalmatian, your Doberman, your Boxer, your Pointers. A lot of those are gonna have that super smooth coat, you know, easy breezy, you can easy to take care of. One thing I will mention is I honestly think that smooth coated dogs need um, a lot of attention paid to their coats because they can get skin issues really quickly. So regular bathing um, is typically fairly quick and just keeps their skin in really, really good condition and you don't get a lot of bald patches and things like that. So smooth coated dogs, really great, um, you know, low maintenance. You know, you do have to make sure you don't let them get too hot and sunburned on, you know, in direct sun. And you do have to maybe like buy them a coat or a raincoat if you live in a place where there's lots of weather. So smooth coated dogs, love them. Um, and our last coat type that we talk about is our wire coat type. So for the most part, these are the terriers that you've come to know and love, right? And we have two kind of distinct coat patterns on most of our terriers. So most of our longer legged terriers where the ratio of leg to body length is like, um, they have those taller legs in proportion to like how long their backs are. Um, they're gonna have that short kind of jacket. They're gonna have wiry faces. They have beards and eyebrows and can look like grumpy old men. And they're gonna have wire, like that harsh, dense coat on their legs. And then we have our shorter legged terriers where their backs are much longer than their legs. They tend to have more furnishing. So instead of having that little strip of chest hair, they're gonna have like a skirt or harsher hair that maybe goes to the ground or at least grows longer. Um, some of those longer legged terriers, um, if they get clippered, a lot of times their color will completely change. It'll really, really fade that color quite quickly. If they're stripped, they tend to keep their richer color. Um, some kind of wire coat types that maybe aren't a terrier would be an Affen Pinsir, a Brussels Griffon, a wire haired pointing Griffon, uh, a German wire haired pointer. And some of our, you know, we have wire haired dachshunds, right? So dachshunds kind of enjoy being in many different coat types, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, so leading you through those coat types, um, I hope that these explanations just help explain to you why we categorize these breeds this way. And when we're talking about coat type, what exactly are we talking about? Um, I'd like you to head on over to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and check out our many great courses that kind of talk about the curated list that you would need for each coat type. And if you need any more information, head on over there. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone. 
Thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought. And as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content. And we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.